Today I'm going to discuss seven composition tips that we as landscape photographers can use in our photography and these landscape photography tips come from the one and only Ansel Adams. It's episode 9 of this uh, inspirational series where I talk about the work of other great artists and I think it's time to talk about Ansel Adams because it's one of the iconic figures in landscape photography. I think he's the one that transformed simple landscape photography and fine art landscape photography. Together with Frank Archer he developed uh, the zone system that was used to determine the correct exposure and the correct contrast in case of a print and this zone system uh, stands as a base, as a foundation uh, to the modern cameras, to the way our cameras see light and interpret light and show us the correct exposure. Now Ansel Adams influenced me a lot especially by his concept of visualization that stands for trying to see with your mind's eye what the final result of your photo should be. Now this doesn't mean that you will see with your mind's eye the final result because we are talking about an artistic uh, process and whenever we are talking about an artistic process this means that some elements are going to change through time. You may start the, the process with something in your, uh, on your mind and with an idea, but by the end of it, things will change and things will evolve. Now, let's take a look at seven of his photos and try to discuss it and try to kind of offer you some tips and ideas of why I think those photos look good and why I think those compositions work. Now I will start with photo number one that I think for me it's the, the highest point that you can go with an S-curve. Having a really powerful S-curve in your uh, landscape photo as a guiding line I think offers a really, a really powerful way to take the viewer and go with him through, uh, through this wonderful journey uh, that goes through your photo and ended up on the final uh, element that is your own subject. Now I think Ansel Adams does a really great job in this photo by using the river as a way of taking the viewer's eye and leading it to uh, the mountain. Another element that he uses in this photo is stop elements. I like to call them stop elements. I don't know exactly if there is a, another term for it, but uh, whenever uh, you have an S-curve and that S-curve is a little bit brighter, all the darker elements that are near that S-curve that kind of forces the eye to stay on the S-curve, I think those elements can be called stop elements and those elements don't let you to wander around. It's a, it's a really simple way to photograph and post-process your photos because it's not only about what you're doing on the field it's very much of how you interpret the photo when you're post-processing. So having those top elements really help you and as you can see it's a really really simple composition. I'm a fan of simple compositions. They are better appreciated uh, by a wider range of audience. Now let's take a look at photo number two. It's a panoramic shot and uh, the peak on the right it's the clear subject of this photo. Now there are other elements in this photo that might compete with this peak but it's not happening and I think this is a really important aspect especially when you're photographing mountains because you have several peaks and how do you frame something with several peaks in such a way that only one of those peaks looks interesting and looks like it's the main subject of the photo. Well first of all the main, uh, the main contendant uh, for the peak in the right would be the biggest peak in the left of the photo. But that peak, that stone wall, it's not framed completely. You don't see the end of it and because you don't see the end of it you interpret it again as a stop element. Just as an element that will stop the eye to escape the photo. That element is there to hold you inside, to hold you exactly like a container if you want. And those other peaks that are behind it, uh, the, the main interesting subject, are kind of hidden in clouds or mist. And because of that, and because there are just hints of what is going on behind it, they act as an interesting visual background. And they act also as a support for the main element that it's that peak in the right. And I think that um, the panoramic decision was a really good one because if you didn't have the panoramic framing to this, you will lack 
the stopping element from the left and I think this is not uh, this is it could have worked yeah it, it could have worked the photo would still look okay but in order to have this looking okay I think you need a longer curve but every time I can uh, I can have I can have such a thing where I'm also using a stopping element to, to the left, I'm using it. This is exactly what I did, for example, in my last workshop. Here's the photo. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not a copy because it's not in the same location, but it's an inspiration and it's something that I learned to use elements to stop the eye, to block you from escaping the photo. Now let's move to photo number three. And this is about simplicity and having the subject in a perfect light. Now I know that Ansel Adams did a lot of post-processing in his dark room and if you don't know anything about how those photos were processed in those times just do a little search on YouTube Ansel Adams in dark room and you will learn that dodging and burning these two tools from Photoshop are just a way of taking the past and bringing it to the present and giving us the new digital photographers uh, the ability to do what the old photographers did when they developed their photos. So this photo is a simple tree, a simple interesting tree that it's in front of all the forest and the forest is a little bit darker and the tree is a little bit brighter and the, the, the background trees act as a background. <laughs> but the thing is you need a darker background than uh, you have this this tree that it's in, uh, in it, it's it's in front of that dark background it's a simple lesson of a simple composition that you can do and this can work with anything the main thing is to have your subject in light and then you have a darker background and this will make your subject pop and just framing that that single element i think i think it will make this uh, I don't know, this composition work, this com it, it will look, it will look simple, it will look good. Photo number four, it's about the alternation of darkness and light and it's, it goes, the development of the photo, it's on a vertical way. Even that, the photo, it's on a landscape format, the development of the photo, it's uh, going vertical. And as you can see, you have darkness, light, darkness light and darkness it's very important that you start with darkness and end with darkness because what is dark will kind of force the eye to stay inside what is light will kind of draw the eye to it and depending on how big it's the light uh, is the light area that area will attract more the eye if you have an area that it's in light and it, it's smaller than other area that it's in light then these two areas will act as um, let's say two similar elements but the bigger area will attract the eye the smaller area will function as a let's say proportion establisher or ground establisher or location establisher photo number five it's a lesson about black and white conversion and this is something that you can always do whenever you see a simple shot on the ground with some flowers or with some interesting plants just try to see it in black and white because it will help you a lot and many times you can photograph flowers and if you don't have the perfect light if you don't have sunrise light or sunset light and if you're not able to stand on the ground then it's not going to look that interesting but you can photograph it right from above and do a black and white conversion and alter the color channels and bringing those flowers to life and creating a really good separation and good contrast between uh, the flowers and the rest of the photo number six again uses this alternation of darkness and light but i think it's it's a much more complex way to use it for example if you take a look at this photo again this would not work that good without the left shadow that shadow over there it's the perfect stop element that will kind of force you to look at the half dome uh, and the moon that it's right above that uh, that peak there is another shadow and that is something that we can force the discussion to it because i don't know if that was really the case though the most important element is the left shadow and then half dome and then the moon in the top but we can we also have a shadow in the right 
uh, area of the photo in the in the lower part that is that works really good that that creates uh, a really a really good break into into all that uh, vertical um, development of the photo and the last photo that we will talk about today photo number seven it's about the simplicity of the line as you can see over here it's a simple uh, ridge line and you just have the moon to the upper right part of the photo and then you have com complete darkness in the lower part of the photo i think this is a photo that speaks very much about ansel adams second passion for classical music because i think this this kind of a photo makes you dream this kind of a photo always makes you dream of stories of what could be uh, beneath that mountain or what is beyond all those ridges and all those mountains and i think that it's a brilliant way to use photography as a way to awaken the the artistic uh, the artistic ideas and expression of every person that looks at that photo i think this is one of the most beautiful ways that you can use photography if you can if you can create those uplifting feelings, if you can create feelings of happiness, feelings of mystery and feelings of beauty, I think for me at least this, this is what landscape photography should be all about. And now it's the end of episode 9 and I really thank you if you watch me until now and um, if you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon to know exactly when I do a new upload. And if you are already subscribed, thanks for watching, thanks for commenting and supporting my channel and sharing my work and hitting the like button on my videos and all those other things that you do. And until next time, keep on photographing. It's the only way that you can get there. Bye-bye. Mistakes and regrets I left them today